How's it going guys? I'm Josh and today we're doing something very new in my channel, my first ever lens review video. I have the 50mm 1.2 right here. It's a very nice, crazy piece of glass. And then we have its very cheap, small counterpart, the 50mm 1.8. So I want to talk about if this lens is worth the extra thousand dollars, but before we get into this, this is actually my first ever lens review video. So if you have any feedback on what you liked, what you didn't like, what made you hate me, what made you love me, leave it in the comments down below so I can make better ones in the future. And on that note, let's get into it. Also super important preface, when you see my shots, do not let them sway you into buying these lenses. I actually say for people who are shopping around for lenses, try not to look at too many nice photos taken with said lenses because you can take amazing photos with almost any lens. It's more about the photographer than the actual equipment and it's so easy to be swayed to buy a lens just because you see a really really sick image and you're like oh they're all gonna turn out like this. They're not. Appreciate the images but don't let them sway you if that's possible. First off, in the interest of full disclosure, Canon was nice enough to let me rent out a bunch of this gear including this lens which I've just had for over a week now and I'll be showing you a bunch of my test shots that I've taken in the last six days. Now just because they're letting me borrow this gear does not mean that I'm gonna be overly appreciative and not hold back on the criticisms. I'm gonna try and be as honest as possible and a little spoiler alert, I'm not sure if this lens is worth it. It's amazing, I'm not sure if it's worth it. So anyway, let's get into it and actually talk about the lens. So to begin, notice the sizing between these two lenses. This is a $100 lens, it's made out of plastic, it's super lightweight and tiny, and it's definitely not the highest quality gear construction wise. This is much heavier, not huge and lighter than a lot of other bigger Canon lenses. It's also weather sealed. It's definitely more durable. You have this nice focusing ring here. It tells you how far your subject is from the camera. This on the other hand does not have that. It's just an autofocus and a manual focus switch and that's it. Now the question today is not if this lens is better because it is. It's a nicer lens, higher quality build, more capabilities with this. The question is, is it worth it? Is it worth the extra $1,200 for roughly one more stop? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So to begin, I wanna run you through the lineup of Canon's 50 millimeter lenses. This is the cheapest one possible. It's $125 in most places. It's the same exact zoom distance as this guy, um, which is 1300. The only big difference here is just how low the aperture number can go. So this guy, widest possible aperture or lowest possible aperture number, same thing, is f1.8, $125. The next cheapest one is the f1.4 lens, still 50 millimeters. You can find this one for about 340 and this one goes for about 1350. So why is this $1,200 more than this one and what is the best lens of the three for you. So this lens is actually amazing. I recommend it to any beginner photographer looking to buy their first lens that isn't just the stock lens. And the reason why it's so great is because at f1.8, which is a super low aperture number, you can get really nice shallow depth of field when your subject is nice and in focus and everything in the background is super blurry. It's great for low light situations. It's super lightweight. And you've probably heard people say that this is a fast lens. And what it means to be fast is just that you can shoot at a very low aperture number. And people love fast lenses, not just because of the shallow depth of field and the great portraiture, but also because it lets you go handheld when you have less light because low aperture number lets you have faster shutter speed, it's all a counterbalancing thing. So basically, if you're a beginner, start with a 50 millimeter 1.8, undoubtedly, because it's a really great intro lens, it's affordable, and it helps you figure your stuff out. The reason why I say that is, I learned this week when I was shooting with the 1.2, that it's a really, really amazing lens. F1.2 is super, super shallow, so you can really have your subject super well isolated from the background, and the thing with that is, it makes for an amazing, amazing image, and it actually, I think having really good gear can be a bad thing when you're a beginner photographer. Now the reason why is because a lot of taking a good picture is just about good composition. And good composition in a portrait, for example, is just isolating your subject usually and having them nicely framed. Now when you can have such a shallow depth of field like f1.2, it almost makes everything look really, really good no matter what because it's so easy to isolate your subject no matter how the image is framed. So having now learned with less good equipment like the f1.8 and then upgrading to the 1.2 is a cool thing because now I've learned a little more about framing and positioning my subjects and all of this stuff. So I have the compositional skill and I understand my equipment 
And then when I upgrade, I can fully take advantage of my compositional skill with then the benefits of nicer camera equipment. So it's sort of like a double whammy versus if you just jump immediately to the nicest camera gear, then you sort of lose out on having to take good shots with okay equipments. And the same can honestly be said with using an iPhone or a point and shoot. I think you can take incredible, incredible photos with the most simple of camera gears if you know what you're doing. And there's no shame in learning on cheap stuff and eventually upgrading when you're ready. Don't rush into buying this $1,300 lens because you like these photos, even if they are kind of sick, hopefully, maybe. Anyway, that's sort of my spiel for beginner photographers and how this lens isn't for you. But say you've had your time, you've messed with the 1.8, and you're thinking, all right, I think I'm ready to upgrade. Now, things I don't like about this lens, there's a couple things. So first, when you're shooting at 1.2, there's gonna be some vignetting. And for those of you that don't know, the vignetting is when you see the black edges around the corner of the photo, and they're actually fairly dark. Now, sometimes stylistically that looks really nice, and I don't mind it at all. And you can also, you can fix it up in Photoshop and Lightroom, which is what I did for a lot of these images. Sometimes it actually was a bit of a problem. For example, I took this photo and turned it into an animation of my friend Alexa. She runs a food Instagram uh, called Eating NYC. And you'll see that her legs are really, really dark in the bottom. And that was definitely part of the vignetting that comes with this lens. And it didn't look good. So I actually had to go and make a whole new adjustment layer in Lightroom just to lighten up her legs. And it was a bit of a process. So that's definitely one bad thing about this lens at 1.2. However, you're gonna get that with a lot of lenses when you're at the lowest possible aperture number for them. Once you're shooting at f1.8 or higher number wise, you're not gonna get that vignetting anymore. So not a huge problem and it can be fixed in Lightroom without a major issue, but it's definitely something to note. Another thing is that f1.2 is dangerously shallow in that it's super beautiful and it looks awesome. However, focusing can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. So unless you're locked down in a tripod and your subject is a solid object that doesn't move, Let's say you're shooting a handheld portrait of your friend. You're gonna have to take about three or four photos every time you wanna take one photo, just to make sure you get it properly focused on the subject's eyes or where you wanna be focused. Cause it is not easy to shoot at 1.2 and even the smallest little movement can make a shot out of focus. So definitely something to consider, it's, it's challenging. But honestly, that's also a good thing in that you can get some really, really nice bokeh with this lens. It's almost hard not to get bokeh in some shots just because it's so, so shallow. And for those of you that don't know, when you have a low aperture number and you're shooting something closer up, the things behind it often tend to make bokeh, which is when you have those light circles or hexagons or octagons that look absolutely beautiful. So the 50 millimeter 1.2 is kind of a bokeh machine. Also, if you want to learn more about shooting bokeh, I have a whole photo tutorial on the subject. Link to that over there. Now to get a little bit technical, some of you might be wondering, well, 1.2 versus 1.8, that's a 0.6 difference in aperture. It doesn't sound that big. It actually is much bigger than you think. And the reason why is because aperture numbers get progressively larger as you go up. And if you're curious about this, I'll put a link to an interesting forum down below where they talk about the logarithmic progression of aperture. But basic explanation, the difference between f11 and f16 is one stop and the difference between f1.2 and 1.8 is roughly the same one stop. It's a little bit more, I believe, but basically even though it's a small number, it's a pretty big difference. And now we're gonna conduct a little bit of an experiment. I'm gonna set my camera up on a tripod and then just take the same photos with two different lenses and at different apertures to see how they differ. First off, we've got the same lens, the 50 millimeter 1.2 for both of these two shots. This one is shot at f1.2 and this next shot is shot at f1.8. And I'll flick at them really quick so you can compare. A couple things to notice. First, at f1.2, there is that vignetting around the photo. Could be taken out, but that was just by default there. Second, notice that at f1.8, the bokeh in the back, actually in like the center of the photo, looks a little bit more rounded and more defined, maybe even a little bit better, but the appeal in the 1.2 is that everything else is even more out of focus, so it draws more attention towards your main focusing points. Now for the next shot, we're comparing the 50 millimeter 1.2 with the 1.8, both shooting at f1.8. So this first shot is at with the 50 millimeter 1.2, and notice there's no vignetting. And then the next shot, you'll see 
looks pretty similar. The bokeh is a little bit more defined. However, there's now that vignetting because you're at the lowest possible aperture number. So one big appeal in shooting at f1.2 is if you want to shoot at 1.8, it's going to look really, really good versus if you're shooting at f1.8 with the 1.8 lens, it'll still look fine, but not quite as good. You have to battle with the vignetting and people say that it's not quite as sharp. Still really beautiful images. I love the 1.8 lens. And finally, the big question that you're probably wondering is, do I think the 50 millimeter 1.2 is worth it and will I buy it? So I'll get to if you should buy it or not. Me personally, here is my plan. I'm not gonna upgrade my 50 millimeter 1.8 quite yet. Right now, I'm shooting on a crop sensor camera. I own a 70D. I've just been renting this 5D Mark IV and even though I'm obsessed with it, I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy it or not, we'll see. Now, when I do go full frame, I'm definitely going to buy an upgraded 50 millimeter lens. Now, the reason why I'm waiting to go full frame is because 50 millimeters on a crop sensor camera are a little bit more zoomed in. So for those of you that don't know, the big difference between a crop sensor camera like the 70D and a full frame camera like the 5D series is that crop sensors are 1.6 times for Canon more zoomed in on lenses. So a 50 millimeter on a full frame has the equivalent zoom range on the Canon Hey Siri, what's 50 times 1.6? That would be 80. That would be 80. So basically because of the 70D's crop factor, a 50 millimeter on this 70D camera is actually like an 80 millimeter. And if that doesn't make much sense, just know that lenses are more zoomed out when you're shooting with a full frame camera. My point here is that the 50 millimeter, I'm not a crazy fan of because it's too zoomed in on a crop sensor camera like my own. However, when I do go full frame, I think I'm gonna buy a 50 millimeter 1.4 because I really do like that extra boost of having the lower aperture number for the sake of all the great stuff I've already talked about, shallow depth of field, lower light situations, just being able to shoot handheld in those low light situations, and beautiful, beautiful bokeh. Um, but I don't think the extra $1,000 upgrade it costs to go from 1.4 to 1.2 is worth it for me. The last thing I wanna go into is what does it mean for a lens to be worth it? Because the fact is, is that the 50 millimeter 1.2 is the best lens in this series. Undoubtedly, there are a couple small little technical details that make it Okay, but I'm not gonna go into that. For the most part, it is the best lens. However, the difference between the 1.2 and the 1.4 is $1,000. So you don't have to ask yourself not, is it better, but is it $1,000 better? And to me, it just isn't. I don't think that, I mean, the biggest selling point on the 1.2 is the fact that it's weather sealed. And that's really helpful because I do a lot of nature photography and adventures and national parks and stuff. But I also don't think it's a huge deal because I'm normally pretty good about keeping my equipment dry or using an umbrella or whatever it takes, especially because that thousand can go into getting myself another lens, really. Definitely check your bank statements and think about if it's worthwhile to you, but I definitely wouldn't kick the door in just to get the 1.2 and you should seriously consider, no matter how much money you have or how little it matters to you, seriously consider the 1.4 because I think that's a great contender, even though I unfortunately didn't get to try it out yet. All the reviews I've read online have also also said that it's a great lens so I'm excited about that and I think I definitely will make those two big full frame and 1.4 upgrades one day hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and gained some sort of insight from this if you want to check out any of these three lenses links to them on Amazon down below in the description and finally be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it uh, because it really helps me and I've got more lens reviews coming up very soon I'm also probably gonna review the 5d mark 4 which I'm testing this week too also be sure to check out my Instagram link to it right over here to see more of my photos and also you can check out my website where I have tons of photo content from prints of my best shots to reviews of my equipment and tutorials on lots of cool camera stuff you can do so definitely check that out link to it right over here and finally don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up because it really helps while I'm on a roll of asking for lots of stuff leave a comment down below letting me know what you liked about this video what you didn't like and how I can improve because I really just want to make better videos and that's, that's kind of it. So anyway guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Canon, thanks for letting me test out your stuff and, and talk a little bit of smack. And that is all I have to say. I will see you guys eventually. I'm gonna go make pasta. <laughs>